as promised, there are a myriad of applications for type 1 and type 2 errors, and we're going to see a little bit more about that in this last example. So it's by far one of the most important applications of type 1 and type 2 errors is in screening testing. So, for example, security tests, metal detectors, um, when you walk into stadiums and amusement parks, that kind of thing, when they search your bags, inventory control, so things are going through on a line and whether they get accepted or rejected by the machines, um, computer programs, malware detection, spam filtering, um, optical character recognition, biometrics, all of that stuff, that's all, can, all of these applications can have type 1 and type 2 errors. We're actually going to focus on the last one, though, which is medicine. COVID-19 testing, uh, mammograms, x-rays, colonoscopies, blood pressure, etc. There's tons of applications. Now these are medical screening tests, not medical uh, diagnostic tests when they actually take a tissue sample or something like that. That's a different type of test. So medical screening, um, we are going to assume in general when you're doing medical screening, that the person does not have the disease or trait. That's a pretty standard issue for medical screening. So we're going to fill out the contingency table for COVID-19 testing. So we're going to label our errors as either false positive or false negative. Yes, those are related to what we're doing, and we want to see that. Okay, so let's start off with our null and alternative hypotheses. We assume, in general, that the person does not have, and this is COVID-19, so that would be the disease we're working with. So this would be the patient does not have COVID-19. Oops, I'm going to have to put this on another line. And this would be the patient has COVID-19. Okay, so now let's translate that into the reality here. So over here we have reality. This is the actual situation. So if H0 is truly true, that means that the patient truly, um, I guess I should say, does not have COVID-19. And you could see, oh, we could do this for anything. We could do this for uh, pregnancy. We could do this for cancer. We could do this for all sorts of things. If H0 is false, that means the patient, and again, this is reality. That's why I'm putting the word truly in there. Truly has COVID-19. Now you may be thinking, well, how is that different than the hypotheses? It's not much. It's just that this is these are the hypotheses. This is your suppositions, your hypotheses. This is the actual situation. That's why I'm underlining the word truly. So this patient truly does not have this. This patient truly does have it. Now your verdict is not, not quite written that way. You wouldn't write verdict. So the person gets the screening test for COVID-19 and the test can come out two ways. If the test does not reject the null hypothesis, that means that the test lets the null hypothesis stand, which would mean that the test is negative. See the word not in there? So in medical testing, we don't write verdict, we write test negative. If the test rejects the null hypothesis, then that would mean that the test is positive. They're testing negative for COVID-19. And then this would be they're testing positive for COVID-19. Very important with the test negative, test positive. That's very important for screening tests. That's kind of how all of these will work, right? You walk through the metal detector and it doesn't beep if you're testing negative. You walk through the metal detector and it does beep, you're testing positive. So for screening tests, um, we can actually make a little note. For screening tests, your decisions will be test negative, test positive for decisions. A lot of the time. I, wanna, I don't want to say all the time, but most of the time. All right. Now, top left corner. The person truly does not have COVID-19 and they test negative. So this is a correct decision here. So I'm going to flip to this color. So this is the patient tests or tests negative and is COVID-19 free. So this is good, right? The smiley face. This is a correct decision. We are happy about this, right? 
By the same token, we're happy down here. This is a patient tests positive and they truly have it. So this is another correct decision. Oh, but what about the bad ones? All right. Well, down here, this is a patient that truly does not have COVID-19, but the test is positive. Mm. So this is the patient truly is COVID-19 free. Oops, I'm going to run out of space for COVID-19 free, but they test positive. That is called, well, first of all, it's a type one error. It's a type one error. And in medical stuff, as well as in screening tests, it has a name. It's called a false positive. Very important. Okay. And then over here, we actually have the patient truly has COVID-19 and this was a big problem actually originally but they test negative in early days especially this was a very big problem so this is a type 2 error that they're making and in screening tests like this the type 2 error is usually a false negative this is usually the setup for a screening test something very similar to this. Now, which of these two is the worst, right? What are the consequences? Okay, so the type one error, the false positive. So the type one, which is the false positive, the consequence is that the person's going to get more care and more testing. More testing, more health care. Etc. And then eventually, hopefully, they'll figure out that they're not, they don't really have it. And then over here, the type 2 error, of course, they could have something else that's causing the disease or the test to think they have it. That would be interesting to know. Is a false negative. And the consequence for that is the person's walking around getting other people sick. So they think that they're fine and they're not. So they would transmit the disease to others. Which is worse? Well, obviously this one. Um, now in the case of the criminal justice system, I mean, reasonable people can argue about which is worse, but here there's no question. When it's saying which is worse, this one's worse by far, because especially in the case of a communicable disease, because you're communicating that disease to others and that's really bad. All right, so let's go back just a couple pages to this box right here and let's add in a couple things so we learned that in screening tests and let's just add this in another color um, here in screening tests these tend to be so I'm just gonna say in screening tests and it's not a hundred percent it's not all screening tests are like this it just tends to be the most common way to do it in screening tests these tend to be test negative test positive Right, those tend to be your decisions right there. And then in screening tests, this tends to be the false positive, And this tends to be the false negative most of the time. Because screening tests are usually set up. I'm um, just, uh, I have no good place to write this. Screening tests are usually set up that the H naught is neutral or negative, right? So we assume they don't have it or they don't have the gun if they're going through a metal detector, they don't have this, that, or the other. And the H1 is that is tends to be the positive. And if that's the case, that they have the gun, they have the disease, they have this, right? So don't have the disease, do have the disease. Don't have a gun, do have a gun. Don't have spamware on your, on your computer or malware, do have malware on your computer. So that tends to be the setup for screening tests, in which case then these tend to be test negative. Matter of fact, I'll just write it in here. This tends to be test negative. This tends to be test positive. That, that'll just be clearer if I write it there. 
And again, it doesn't have to be this way. This is just the most common way to do these. So they tend to be screening tests tend to be negative here. I guess I should say negative voice here, positive voice there. Do not have the disease, do have the disease. And if that's the setup you're going with, which we tend to, then this tends to be test negative, this is false negative, this is test positive, and this is false positive for screening tests. So you can kind of give it a star. Now there's one last thing to talk about, which is something called the sensitivity and the specificity of a test. The sensitivity of a test is actually the power of the test. The same thing we saw a couple pages ago, right? So it said, since it said the power of a test is one minus beta. You'll hear about these in fields, especially in nursing, epidemiology, criminal justice. When COVID-19 was first coming out, um, Dr. Anthony Fauci, he was talking about, you know, oh, the sensitivity of this test, the specificity of this test. They're talking about um, things that are related to the false positive and false negative. There's more going on here. The sensitivity is the power of the test. Specificity is the confidence of the test. And you can see, oh, alpha and beta are involved in there. Yes, they are. So in screening tests, they, these two can be very important. So um, sensitivity measures the proportion of actual positives that are correctly classified as such. So it's the number of sick people that the test is actually capturing. And specificity, it measures the proportion of actual negatives which are classified as such. In other words, what proportion of people that are not sick are actually being caught by the test. So these are really, we like these to be very high numbers, 99%, you know, at most, or at least. And in early days of COVID, they were not that high. And that was creating big problems because if your sensitivity and specificity are not high, you're going to have a lot of false positives, false negatives. Remember that alpha is the probability of this. So the probability of this false positive is alpha. And the probability of a false negative is beta. Beta, right? And so in early days of COVID, the, the problem was the sensitivity and specificity were not great, and it was making these alphas and betas really high. So if you don't have a lot of power, then you're going to have a lot of false negatives. And if you don't have a lot of specificity, confidence, you're going to have a lot of false positives. And we were getting both because it was early days and it was a brand new virus that nobody had ever seen before. Um, just like with uh, false positive and false negative, just like with alpha and beta, there is a trade-off between these two. So if you try to lower your sensitivity, you'll raise your specificity and vice versa. So if you really want your test to be very, very sensitive, then it's going to lose some specificity and, and vice versa. So just so you've seen these terms and realize they're related to false positives and false negatives. They're not the same thing, but they're related. And so you will hear them and that way you kind of know, oh, okay, that's related to the false positive, false negative thing. It's actually true positive and true negative. That's what you're seeing. So this is the proportion of true positive or true negative. This is the proportion of true negative, right? The people that are truly negative that are caught by the test. This is the proportion of true positives. The people that are actually positive that are caught by the test. And of course, proportion of true positives must be related to the proportion of false positives and vice versa. There's, a, there's relationships going on here.